Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from ICM. So it is molded in 148 scale and it's a part of their diorama series so you can notice it's a DS4802 and it copies World War II rough airfield. So we will get two Spitfires and figures from what I can guess on the box art and this is a commercial sample so you will get exactly the same stuff as what you will see in this video review so it will be interesting to open it together and see what is supplied in this nice box. And first of all we are going to start with a box art, it's really beautiful here and I'm happy that they keep using the let's say more or less painting looking pictures this is not a fully digital picture from what i understand and it looks beautiful and i truly hope that they will also uh, introduce some posters with this or maybe some t-shirts who knows here by the way you can see comparison with my hands on the side we have some information about the kit so what do we have here 135 parts for assembly of spitfire and also 121 parts for assembly of another Spitfire MK8, 85 parts for assembly of 8 figures, and that's pretty much all. Obviously glue and paints are not included into this nice box, and on the opposite side you can see two marking options which are also shown on the box art, but I really hope that there will be more. We will see it in the assembly menu, obviously. And just like any recent release from ICM, this one is sealed with the tape, so I'm going to cut through it and we will check everything closer together. In the meantime, let me remind you that you can support us with a small donation. So we have a special uh, donate button or support DSV button on the website. And it's all done via PayPal, so it should be safe and quick. And of course you will decide how much we will get. And all this money will be used in order to improve the 14 video equipment or maybe get some rare kits. Um, now at the moment I'm trying to fix my PC and get another one, so uh, that's why some reviews are a bit limited in quality. So here you can see that box structure is standard for ICM, it means this cover printed top lid and then we have a sturdy white cardboard box and now we are going to open it as well. So here we have this plastic bag, one plastic bag, second and third. I suggest that we review only one of these Spitfire sets because obviously they are more or less the same, these are just different versions of the aircraft and then we will gradually move to figures and some other elements in this kit. So I'm opening first plastic bag and here straight away on the top we have clear parts packed into the separate plastic bag, so I'm going to open them as well. Just give me a second. Okay, so here it is. Let's zoom in. And you can see that molding quality seems to be fine. I think this part should look okay on the out of the box build. But there are no masks included from what I remember. At least in original Spitfire there were no masks or masking templates included. So you will have to do everything with your own hands or maybe get some aftermarket set. Obviously it will speed up the assembly process and also make it easier to work with the model. Next we continue with the first grey plastic sprue. Here I would rather zoom out a bit. Okay, so you can see we have a left fuselage half which is molded together with the tail fin, we have recessed panel lines, also we have machine gun barrels and some cockpit elements, even the instrument panel with pre-molded dials. Landing gear wheels will be plastic ones assembled out of two halves, so here I would rather search for some resin replacement because it will bring more features to this area of the aircraft. And by the way, here you can take a closer look at the external features of the aircraft of the fuselage and here we have some minor features in the fuselage area. I do not see any guiding elements surprisingly. So you have to be careful while combining all this stuff together. But other than that I do not see any possible issue. By the way here is the one piece pilot seat. It's really strange looking, at least to me. And here you can see oh, also Landing gear legs, just give me a sec. So landing gear wheels are molded as a single piece parts. That's really funny. Now it makes a bit difference because it is more or less okay for out of the box build. But if you would like something more serious, I would rather suggest to upgrade 
for resin. Next, we continue with another Physiowatch half and also engine parts. Yes, there is an engine included into this kit. So out of the box, you don't have to get anything separately. Here you can see some parts for this engine. And everything looks cool, so it's just a matter of careful assembly and installation on the aircraft. And I wonder how it would be possible to expose it, because you can notice that these uh, cooling panels, they're pre-molded, so they're not removable. And here, by the way, you can see also separate uh, propeller blades, which will have to be carefully aligned together. And of course, inside again, we have some minor features for the cockpit. And in my opinion, they look okay for out-of-the-box build, and they should look even better if you do some pre-shading maybe some weathering and maybe some washes will be applied there next we continue with the third gray plastic sprue so this one is dedicated to tail wings rudder uh, chin panel as you can see there are two versions of each part we have under fuel tank we have this uh, panels for machine gun base in the wings we have some rockets and bombs and everything looks cool if you flip it over inside you can notice that tail wings and rudder they are molded as a single piece parts which is also good thing it will help with the um, easier assembly and next that's not all we get something more or less i would say similar because here you can see these wing ends also we have um, them supplied in three different types we have separate cooling panels so i guess these ones will be used in case you would like to replicate the open engine but what's really cool is the one piece top cooling panel now i'd rather suggest to use it uh, in any way so do not replace it with anything because it will give you a smooth connection here and I think you know what I mean because it is a visible area of the aircraft so frankly speaking I'm glad that at least here it is copied just like this and last but not the least is the sprue with wing ports here it is it is quite interesting because Spitfire has this angle to the wing and you can see that whole sprue is slightly bent to the same angle. We also have these separate panels for machine gun base, we have separate ailerons, but flaps are molded in and I'm not sure if there is any possibility to do it with the original um, tools with the original accessories of course you can get the aftermarket p set from edward and try to install it here and inside we have all this let's say wheel wells and machine gun base they're more or less pre-molded so you just have to install machine guns here and you'll be good to go okay so just as a small reminder we have the second spitfire included as well here it is Pretty much the same set of parts from what I can see, that's why I suggested we are skipping it and moving to the next sprue. So here it is. It's a sprue with figures and there should be 8 figures included. This is a really impressive amount, there is even a dog. I would give you a small spoiler. So let's take a closer look. Straight away I can say that there is no part numbering, so be careful while picking the part. But now we can zoom into this corner and check everything a bit closer. So, parts division is, uh, I would say, more or less similar to what we are used to seeing 135 scale. It means one piece torso and separate hands, legs and head. And overall features, they look more or less fine, especially considering the fact that there are not that many figures in 148 scale, especially with the aviation topic. By the way, here is the dog. And we also get some accessories which will be used for depiction of the service crew with aircraft, which is also nice. And by the way, here you can see some letters which will be, or service letters, which will be also used with the aircraft. So all in all, we get a really nice set of figures and items which will be handy for a diorama with Spitfire. Obviously you don't have to use them all at once and that's the main beauty of this set because you are supplied with all necessary things which can be used later. Next we go on with a small brochure that ICM is ready to, report, to replace this sprue if it is broken and just contact them via email or maybe via their Facebook group. 
Next we continue with the first assembly menu. This one is dedicated to pilots and ground personnel of Royal Air Force, Air Force Command. So now let's zoom in, actually out. And here you can see parts map. So here we have the part numbering, so pay attention to this. First we start with assembly of various accessories for the servicing area. So as you can see various ladders and stands and also jerry cans and oxygen bottles. And next we continue with figures. So again we even have the separate marking guide for the dog. And of course paints chart, safety information and address of the manufacturer. I'm just checking the kit number so as you can see it's written that there is a separate release and there is also this DS4802 which we are checking at the moment. And of course there are two separate manuals for the Spitfire. Here you can see them. Let's take a look at this one maybe? No, at this one. So because it's a later version, it's a MK9, so it will be interesting to see. So first of all, there is no history note. We have parts map straight away and assembly process starts with an engine. Oh, so there are decals inside. I forgot about this. So we have decals. These ones are for MK9. And printing quality seems to be fine. So it's just a matter of careful application. Obviously there are no cockpit decals. So if you would like some cockpit features, you will have to do everything with your own hands and tools. And I will show decals for MK8 in a second. So here they are. The same stuff. So we have some stencils, we have roundels, but we do not have anything for the cockpit. Okay, but printing quality is nice. So now we open the page in this assembly manual. Here we go on with assembly of the so engine gets installed into this nose area. As you can see, that's exactly what I said. If you would like to install the engine, you will have to cut off this um, cooling panel. We assemble separate cockpit. We install it into the fuselage. Then we join fuselage halves together. And note that cockpit is getting installed into the uh, glued together fuselage halves, which is rather interesting sequence, assembly sequence. Uh, next we continue with the canopy parts. So here you will have to decide whether you would like to open them or close. You install the wing, you install machine guns and rockets, maybe bombs. And the final stage involves external fuel tank, landing gear, propeller, chin panel, which is supplied in two versions. And of course here we have paint chart. What I removed from the assembly manual is this painting guide, which is black and white. Now uh, that's really funny. So there are two marking options here. You can see first one and here is the second one. Obviously I would rather suggest to find some reference material for these two in order to understand which paint numbers you should use or maybe to find some interest in, let's say, information for their Rama project. As for the whole kit, it should be already available. You can get it in Modelimax webshop, for example. Of course, I will be happy to hear your opinion about such release. Write it here in the comment section below. If you like this video, press the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today, and bye!